Welcome to another episode of Life of an eBay Soul, and this is the Samo episode. Over here, we're going to be covering a few things that comes with the approaching holiday season, what you should be actually doing, and of course, a wrap up from the summer itself. So what have I been doing would be the first question you probably are asking me. So I've been on a bunch of different garage sales, estate sales, and even all kinds of different sales that I could get my hands on because I want to get the latest and best merchandise I can at the cheapest and best possible price. Now, you might ask me, how come I don't do retail as much? Well, retail is a lot more expensive and I have to go to a bunch of more places to find a good deal to resell it. And I like to find the things that cost me the least possible money and get the most out of my buck. Now, I do do retail a lot as well, but in the summer, glass sales is one of a kind time of a season. Therefore, you have to utilize the best possible time that you can for what you can gather. After this, after I'm done with glass sales over the summer, I go into a bunch of retailers and I try to find the best bargains, the things that are selling for the cheapest amount of price and I can get the most money out of them. Then I go and resell it on eBay for more cash. And I suggest for you to do the same thing as well. You gotta go and find bargains. You gotta find things that are cheap, that are not expensive, but are quality items. That is the big key for you to make big money in the retail business. You can't just go about and find just cheap items because just cheap is not going to be good enough. You're competing against thousands of different sellers. You've got to give your buyer value. Think about it this way. If you yourself are not willing to actually buy this item and use it, why would anyone else buy it themselves? So it doesn't matter if the item costs 99 cents. If the item is useless for anyone, why would they actually buy it and why would they choose you to be the one who is selling it to them? Therefore, you have to bring value to the product. So the products that I'm always looking for are things that have value, vintage, old, unique, different. Those are keywords that I'm actually using right now, but those are keywords that have to describe the item itself. So if I find one of a kind item, and I know it's going to sell for a lot more money, I would definitely grab it. Now, one thing that I want to give you as an advice, and this is very important for people who are just starting out in this business, you got to know what you're dealing with. And therefore, it's very important to get educated. This is why I spent countless amount of hours in the library getting antiques and vintage collectible books, reading them, studying them, and getting to know everything I can about the business that I entered into. This is something you should do as well. Getting the edge and getting to the next step is very important to take your selling to the next level. There's people who are not doing this. There's people who think and they're lazy in the business themselves. And of course, they don't see the results that they actually want. If you want to make top money and doing this for a living, you got to be one of the best sellers out there because there is a lot of competition. But it doesn't mean you can't make money. All it means, you just get to be and have to be better than the rest. And that's why I am actually teaching people how to do exactly that. And for me, when I just got started, and this is advice for newbies, it was the hardest thing when you get started. And even just making a single listing took me such a long time to make it good and perfect. After a while, you get so much better at selling, buying, and finding merchandise for sale as well. So this takes time to own, but it doesn't matter. Everyone is trainable, especially if you put your mind toward it. Now, with the upcoming holiday season, that means you have to have a bunch of different merchandise ready right now to be on sale. Now, you might say it's only September. It's too early. It's never too early to get started. In fact, you only have two months right now to get ready if you haven't already done so. There is September, there is October, and in November, the holiday season already starts. That means you have less than 60 days to get all your listing up, everything up and ready, and get started with selling things online because once the holiday season starts, this is where you're going to be making the bulk of your actual online cash. That's why it is so important for you to be ready and prepared right now 
for the upcoming holiday season. A few other tips that I have for you is to bargain. When you go on a garage sale and you see something priced at only 10 bucks, that doesn't mean this is the price of the item. In fact, I like to offer them maybe even two bucks. In fact, I go a lot cheaper than I should. And a few times I actually lost on some really good items because I went and I tried to underprice what it's actually worth. So let me give you one example. There was this extraterrestrial doll and it was actually a statue or something like that and of course that thing was worth maybe over 50 bucks in total now the guy who was selling it he was willing to let it go but he didn't want to sell it for less than two bucks me i went even cheaper i offered him 50 cent of course i had competition right next door to me the guy next to me saw this bargain and he snapped it right there he gave him the two bucks right there and it was gone that means I had less than 30 seconds to give this guy a good offer and if I haven't done it, I, the item would have been gone and it was. So this was a mistake I actually did. So you have to be careful here, especially when you have other people who are coming to the same exact sale. And it's very worth it for you to go on those garage sales and be one of the first people out there so you can go and find the bargains before they go on sale, before actually a bunch of people come in and start to ask, how much is this, how much is this? And the guy would be like, he always will start at the higher price. But if you are forced over there, if there's no competition, there's nobody to compete against you. He doesn't know yet how good this garage sale is actually gonna go. And since he doesn't know how good the sale is actually going to go, you can make pretty good deals before the sale actually starts. Now, once the sale gets started, if it is a rainy day, if the sale was not actually made pretty good, you're not going to have this many clients coming. So you can probably get a bunch of good deals in this specific garage sale. Once in a while, you find a bunch of treasures that are for sale and you can get good deal on them. That's very unusual. Most of the time, you'll find one or two items that are actually worth it for the price that you can resell it for a lot more profit. Sometimes, and sometimes you get into a sale where you have professionals who are doing the selling, such as estate sales. Those are the sales you have to be super careful on because most of the items are not even worth it for you to resell for more money because they go on eBay, they research every single item and they post it up sometimes even higher that you can even sell it online. Therefore, I'm very careful when I go on estate sales. Most of the items I actually buy from those places i have a very hard time letting go and selling them for good money that's why i'm super careful when i go to those kind of sales thank you so much for listening to my podcast if you enjoyed this podcast make sure you subscribe to it because it is totally free for you to subscribe to this podcast and to this channel because a lot of new and exciting things are coming up to this channel as well have a great day and see you in another podcast